Hi, I'm South Cat. What's up, South Cat? And I'm an alcoholic. Um, I've been 60 days clean. I recently just relapsed. And um, I'm trying to get my stuff back together. Hello and welcome to the show. This is your hostess, Simply CC, and today we have our guest co-host. We are. And our special guest. You got your boy, South Cat. All right. So South Cat is an artist. I would say local artist, but you're not from here, right? Nah, I'm not from here. <laughs> but it's cool, though, because I still rep Virginia, too, though, because I've been here for so long. Yeah. But it's, it's South Carolina all day, though. But okay. I still put on for VA. Cool beans. Cool beans. So... Our first question, we like to start with the questions that everybody will ask because our audience doesn't know you yet. Gotcha. So what do you want your audience to gain from listening to your music? Mm. So pretty much just, just like be yourself, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You ain't got to fake it, you know what I mean? A lot of people fake it till they make it, Yeah. you know what I mean? But just just be who you are. Because I talk about that in my music, like everything I talk about is real. You know I mean? mm-hmm. It's nothing fabricated or nothing like that. So to pretty much be yourself, you try to impress people by not being you. If they don't like you for who you is, or mm-hmm. don't come to you for who you is, then you don't need to have them in your life, pretty much. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, your website says that you're going for a worldwide reach. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you go about doing that? Is that like your marketing? Is it like your messages? Is it the people you talk to? Yeah, so, so it's funny, right? right now, I actually got a lot, a lot of fans over in Germany. like, mm-hmm. and, and they vary across... Um, Across the the world, but um, it is like cause it, what I talk about, it, everybody can relate to it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, no matter where you live at, you can relate to it. You know, um, but yeah, but the fan base is it's, it's a little everywhere though now, and that's that's good. That's good. Cool. Um, on your bio, it says that you have some significant influences that impact your music and some of the decisions you make. Would you mind going into some of them? Because we see Biggie Smalls, UGK, mm-hmm. uh, Lil Wayne, Kevin Gates, uh, Young Jeezy. <laughs> I was about to say the wrong person. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, I mean, Biggie, number one, is, mm-hmm. I think I think my first one, I was like five or something. And then he died when I was like seven. And I, that, that really messed me up because mm-hmm. I ain't, I ain't understand that for real then. But, yeah, he got a lot to do with the way I rap, what I rap about. And same with like Kevin Gates and Jeezy and all them, like especially the Southern rappers, because mm-hmm. we all got some of the similar backgrounds. Most of us do. So, and then the way they rap, like their rap style, it's like so many different influences I got, and I, I it all influenced on how I rap, like mm-hmm. Twister, you know, all that. It just, I don't know, if they, they topics. They topics. I was gonna say you said Twister, and my mind was just playing overnight. Because <laughs> <See? laughs> <laughs> Twister, he came, he 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 set a trend too. So it's mm-hmm. like the way he rap, and then I talk fast too, and I got some songs from back when that I rap fast on. Even now, I incorporate some speed rapping into it. Like, but it's like I don't know, man. It's something about the way they were then, and yeah. it's the way they are now. Still, if they still rapping. And I had Biggie would be if he was rapping. It, it, that really impacted me. And Wayne, just because Wayne, the way he went about everything and how he's still relevant to this day. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, do you have any favorite songs by those artists? Jeez, all right. Let me see. Biggie, I mean, his first album, second album, they, they, the whole things, you could play it from track one to the end. So mm-hmm. I like the whole things. Same thing with Kevin Gates. Um... Every track, I ain't even disappoint me yet. Um, uh, Twister, let me think. I'm gonna say Twister's like pretty much any song from Kamikaze. That's just, I think the second album. That all them are my favorites. Mm-hmm. So I really ain't got like no favorite favorite songs for none of them because I listen to, like whole albums and stuff. Mm-hmm. But um, uh, Biggie, I think the first song it might sound a little dark, but uh, that made me really like like him a whole lot was Suicidal Thoughts. Mm-hmm. And that's when I got older, though. Like, my teenage years, you know, you go into them teenage years, you have all kinds of mixed emotions and hoop the hoop. Yeah. So, yeah. Rebel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's bad. So, yeah, Biggie, he really, I'm like, okay, yeah, he feel the same way I'm feeling right now. Mm-hmm. I ain't never did it, of course, because I'm here. Uh, nothing like that. It's just thoughts. So, I think that, that's when we really stick with him. And, um, yeah. And it helped you process. Yeah, 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 definitely did. 
Definitely didn't. Have you keep going? Yeah. Have you keep going? Cool. Did you have any questions yet? Um, yeah, I have one. So, who would you say is your target uh, age group? Um, so, the, the people who I would like to get to is the young generation. That's what I would like to get to. It's a little difficult because they listen to the music we listen to, and it's not, it ain't like positive, positive, positive. Mm-hmm. I mean, my music is positive, and it's still me at the same time, but I mean, y'all know the music now. But it's like, and they, it's like us growing up, what we hear and what we see on TV, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? That's what we try to be like, or mm-hmm. something like that. But it's like, and they, it's, it's all the wrong route. When you're older, you look back like, damn, man, they showing me listening to this for real or doing this. You can't do nothing about it. So, yeah, that, that's my that's what I would like to get to. Mm-hmm. But right now, I'm just, I think my age group is probably, I'm going to say 18 to like 36 or something like that. Judging from my intuition, if you give me permission to keep your temperature elevated higher than the high rise ceiling, I'm ready and willing to go give you that feeling you've been missing for so long. Baby, I'm on a mission to get you right. Whatever's broken, let your boy fix it. I ain't here for a season, I'm here for a reason. What you see is what you get. You no motherfucking bitch, cause I'm a motherfucking boss, and every boss need a boss, bitch. You are still an artist, correct? Yes. Okay. But you also run a record label. Yes. That didn't take away from you being an artist? Nah, it didn't. It didn't. It's like, it's in the beginning it was hard, mm-hmm. but like it, it's better because you get to see, because like now you get it, you really get to see how to market, how to promote. Mm-hmm. At the other side, you ain't just making music now, you get to do everything. Mm-hmm. And you get to see the whole picture, pretty much, not the one piece of it no more. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it didn't it didn't take away, it didn't take away. So has it enriched your experience? Yes, definitely has, definitely has. Cause now it's like when the young rappers or singers or anybody who's trying to get in the industry or the business, I can tell them, I can get them more knowledge now. I ain't got, I ain't gonna just say, hey man, you got to grind, make a million songs mm-hmm. a day. Somebody gonna hear it because it ain't that, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So yeah, it definitely, definitely helped out okay. a whole lot. So what got you to start one? Like, how did you come up with it? All right, it was like, once it 2017, and uh, yeah, I, I was about to, what was it? What happened? So my homeboy, right, my best friend, he lived in Germany. He also, mm-hmm. I know he, um, the, one of the co-founders of the label. But he, um, we were talking about it one time, like for a long time, like, yeah, we might as well do it. Like, like mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Just. The, the the name like record label you thinking oh shit like that's expensive you know what I mean mm-hmm. how can we do that you know what I mean but then once you find out and see people doing it like oh, we could do that mm-hmm. so that that was the main thing that made me want to do it let people know I'm really investing in myself mm-hmm. like it ain't trying to get no major deal which would be good but like mm-hmm. you know what I mean like you really <laughs> taking that money and investing in yourself mm-hmm. and that like, we could do it ourselves that was the main reason. Okay, so what challenges have come with that process? Like when you started, is there mm-hmm. anything that you didn't think would come up or um, that you had to learn about in order to get somewhere that you had an idea for? Um, some challenges that came with that is that people not being on the same page, everybody not being on the same page. Mm-hmm. Like you got this group of people working with you, like producers, artists, whatever, but then when it come down for contracts sometimes, like I ain't anybody trying to take all your money or nothing like that. I mean, we got to file taxes and this and that too. Mm-hmm. So, you know what I mean? But they not understand all that. They think you got to try to rob them for money and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So I know, so that 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 pretty much let me understand too that you don't, I mean, a contract is a contract. But every, stuff like that may be not necessarily cut ties with people or mm-hmm. like that, but maybe... Like, fall back from... Choose not to do business together. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I can have yeah. a personal relationship with you, but I cannot do business Yeah, there we go. There yeah. we go. And then people take advantage, too. That's yeah. one thing I realized, too. Because, oh, you got a label, you know what I mean? You got this, you got that, damn. Mm-hmm. Nah, you just ain't how this works. It's work. work. Yeah. <laughs> this is not just a title. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. So, in the positive aspect, what accomplishments have happened since you started? Yeah, so positive. I mean... It's a, it's a lot, a lot happening that's positive with the with the label, actually. 
JK, we, 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 it's easier to get it out now. I mean, mm-hmm. before, it's, it was still kind of the same, but now you got a name back in there. So people, walk, they, they see me, like, wherever I'm, people that know me, like, oh, it's on 501 Music, you know what I mean, yo? You know what I mean, people? Mm-hmm. So now, now you got something to, to go with the brand, the brand being the artist, and now you got yeah. someone backing, you know what I mean? Might not be the richest or nothing like that. Mm-hmm. But a lot of positive, because a lot of people, like, especially from back home, from where I'm from, they see 501 Music, they know it's me. That's pride. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Pride. That's that's real positive. And people, they gravitate towards it. They want to have something to do with it mm-hmm. somehow, somewhat. They ain't got to impress Like, them. I went to school with him. Yeah, you know what <laughs> I mean? So, like, it's it, it's good. It's, that's that's something real positive. And just knowing that, that you did this, you know what I mean? Yeah. You did this. Okay, can you describe some impacts that you've had with the label or um, even some artists you may have worked with? Yeah, so so I worked with a couple of local artists, a couple Um so, I work with, it's an artist named Kezia Lorenzo. He from New York, but he out here in VA, too. Mm-hmm. And, like, you know, he come to, to the studio, and, you know, he's always following music. I mean, he, he with his own people, though, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But with the label, I'm able to reach out more, and I'm able to do a lot more with it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's more official. I work with um a cat from North Carolina. or oh, he from South Carolina. We live in North Carolina. Shiz, Fetty. You know, we, a couple of things. Um... You got LV Ink guy, he from here. Um, this one guy, well, Biz, y'all might know him, but if y'all, it's Biz, he like he he out here. He um have his own label, his own studio, but a lot mm-hmm. of people work with him. A lot of people, so I work with him a lot. He 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 showed me a lot, a lot with the label because he had a label for a while, mm-hmm. and he here. He like he's here. I mean, you know, I'm I'm back and forth. I'm here, but then I might leave for a couple months. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? All that, but he's stationary, so he actually showed me how to run it, run it, run it with the Hayes Banks. It's a, it's a lot of people. Uh-huh. Beat Man Sosa, it's a lot. It's a lot of people I work with, mm-hmm. a lot. And y'all gonna hear them tracks soon. Uh, Jace Beats, yeah, yeah, y'all gonna hear it all soon. <laughs> okay, um, you mentioned you're in and out of the area mm-hmm. sometimes, um, so that's from your job. Yes. We didn't even start talking about that yet. <laughs> 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 um, so you're in the military. Yes. Okay, so how is that lifestyle and being an artist and running a record label? Is that uh, it gets a little hectic with that just because, like, especially when you one of the bosses, you can't run how you how you want to run it. So mm-hmm. you gotta have keep people in place to to make sure that everything running still. Cause like boom, like I'm in the navy, so mm-hmm. if I'm out to see or something, you ain't got no internet, no phone, whatever, whatever at that time. And say this is supposed to happen, like, boom, set this project put to drop a month from now. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I ain't had in there or nothing like that. So before I got this label and everything, I'll be focused on promoting it myself. And mm-hmm. if I ain't got no in there or nothing, I can't do nothing. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a social media age. So that's why you keep players in place and they promote it for you and everything. I mean, they, they do their part. Mm-hmm. But it's been a little difficult. It's been difficult, but it's also been good at the same time. Mm-hmm. And um, so it's been good because I'm able to reach more people mm-hmm. from different places. You know what oh, because I mean? you have people in different places. Exactly. So, yeah, yes. that's cool. Yes. Okay. Um, I can suggest for, like, posts on social media, you can schedule your posts. Yes. Um, yes. And that comes in handy. So, like, if you know you're going to be out and you know you've got uh, marketable materials already set, mm-hmm. then you literally just set that package up and then have it scheduled to release. That's it. Yeah, do what it do. Yep. But definitely having those people out there is helping you get out on the ground and everything. So yes. That's good. Um, okay, so on the bio on your website, it also mentions some of the artists you work with you met through the military. Yes. So did that have any bearing on the re- relationship that you had with them while you're working with them? Um, did it enhance anything since you guys worked together or kind of like, I don't know how like that works if it was like you guys gotcha. were on the same ship or different ships or anything like that. So. All right. So people, I work with a lot of people that's in the military too, uh, mm-hmm. not even just Navy, military in general. But if I'm working on them, they do music, we'll work together. But it's like, with the military, it's like, even if you're not doing music, when you get close with somebody, mm-hmm. and then when you change commands or whatever, that y'all still cool and everything, but it, it kind of get distant. Because you're not even in the yeah, same world Yeah, you know what I mean? Anymore. Nothing. Nothing yeah. no more. So, yeah, uh, it's a lot of great people that I work with, though, especially when I first came in. Um, so, like, matter of fact, me and my dude, his name Trapedo, we started a group together. Mm-hmm. Well, a duo called Gutterways way back when, and we has a lot of potential. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But I'm on deployment, supposed to be in the six month one, 
ended up being a year one. Yeesh. Yes. He ended up leaving the military. So, and I ain't seen him like 12 years now. Yeesh. Mm. Yeah, I've well, never we, heard the year. Yes. Oh. Yes. My dad's got extended from six months to nine months. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but I never thought about the year. Yes. And, and that's bad. You oh, man. Everything in fall. Not just music fall, but you got relationships. Yeah. Family, it's like, it's oh, bad. God. That ain't bad. But you got to push through it and hope it don't happen to you. Like, yeah. You got to hope it don't. Man. Okay. Um... Dang. <laughs> you threw my questions off. Because yeah, I'm just visualizing what that had to be like. Bad. And I know how hard it was as a family for the nine-month oh, yeah. one. So you can imagine. Oh, gosh. Imagine. Yeah. Bad. Horrible. So, yeah, it's, it's a little difficult because when you're out to sea, right? Mm-hmm. And if you ain't so you hit somebody uh, with a local mainstream, whatever, artist do, do a collab with, and then you lose internet service or something. Mm-hmm. And then when you get internet service again, they could be like email you back saying yeah no whatever, and then y'all can set something up like okay around this time here roughly we can do something, mm-hmm. and when that time comes you might not be back you might will you don't know can't control yeah, it yeah you can't you yeah. can't and then, or they could be done took off all the way mm-hmm. so like I was going so before I even heard the baby right my my friends put me on my man put me on to him like yo he said yo you should do a feature with him. And I listened to him, so oh, he's straight, man. I hit him up. I hit him up. Feature wasn't a lot at all. It was not a lot. I was like, uh, I don't know, like 15 or something? 1,500? I said, yeah, he's straight, man. I hit his management up. They said 15. So then um, we, uh, we, when we came home, he already took off. Like mm-hmm. the next month, he took off. So that 1,500 out the window. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what it cost that much no more. Yeah. So yeah, it's just like the timing. You can't really do things how you want to in the military. But military will give you... Uh, more security with it all, though. I will say that much. Because, mm-hmm. like, you uh, more funding for it, whatever, more people to help invest in you and this and that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, now my questions are out of order. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> my bad. Oh, cool. <laughs> um, so, okay. Shifting focus to performances. Mm-hmm. Um, have you performed? Yes, I have. Okay. Do you enjoy performing? I do. Do you plan on doing it? Yes. Continue. <laughs> yes. Plan on doing it more. Okay. Which one was your favorite experience? So, yeah. I want to say one overseas. Uh, I did one in Oman, the country in the Middle East. Mm-hmm. They went over there. That was, that was the funniest for me, I think. And okay. it was just because people were there. They were hype. Like, um, it was just really good. It was a really good experience. How would you describe their culture as far as performance wise compared to American oh, culture? Oh, it's, it's different. It's, it's like the whole world listen to rap now, and that, that that's real crazy. The whole world listen to hip hop, mm-hmm. and or they took they they took our rap and made their own type of rap, or whatever. Mm-hmm. So it's all pretty much the same. I mean, they ain't they ain't like I mean they dancing for much now. That stuff, of course, and mm-hmm. you know all that. But I would say it's all pretty much the same though. Okay. It's all pretty much the same. That's cool. Um, I'm stuck. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have any questions or anything you were wondering about? Not that I can really think of. Um, during your performances, do you get a lot of um, people that will record and say, hey, I'm going to yes. send this to so-and-so and see what happens? Not what, I don't, no one's ever said that to me. But I do see people out with their phones recording and stuff, though. And after the performance, they'll come talk to me, follow me on social media. And then I talk to them, do social media or something. But never nothing, like, crazy. Okay. Mm-hmm. Crazy. But you would definitely say that you communicate with people, oh, yeah. especially, oh, yeah. you know, afterwards. Yes. I would, oh, yes. I definitely communicate with the fans, though. It's always, like, social media or whatever. But it's, it's nothing like that face-to-face experience, though. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nothing like that. Oh, that is another good way to go. So how has uh, this pandemic and coronavirus affected your Damn. career? <laughs> so it like so for real, for real, it, it was kinda like it kinda it was like a gift and a curse at the same time. Mm-hmm. And I would say it was a the curse because like, you couldn't go out and meet people. You know what I mean? You couldn't go perform, of course, you can't do none of that. Mm-hmm. But the gift that came from it was I actually had time to actually study, like study more about music, marketing, promotion, the business. Actually, I trying to read more books and this and that, and just actually learn it better. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? 
because you ain't taking away some things, so now you got to replace it with something else. Right. So that that was the good thing that came out of it, though. Okay. I was looking for a song um, on a different note so we can transition. Um, the song I was introduced to you on was I Like It. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought it was fun, and then I realized if you speed it up at 1.15, mm-hmm. it sounds like it's on point but i understand why you didn't because you're sampling a song in it right yeah it was so sampling. yeah um but there was another one where you talked about your brother and um it was solid i can't remember which one but it was. was that a sample too I th- well was it a sample it probably was because so the first one, my brother the first one i did was called miss my brother mm-hmm. that one is a, a sample master tree uh, master tree master p uh miss my homies mm-hmm. sample that one you know, that was like the first thing I did for him. So it's a lot of pain in that one. So you probably, yeah, that might be the one you felt heard. it. Yeah, you feel that one. Uh, yeah, so that was going to be like the next question. Uh-huh. So how did his passing affect you? And then how did it affect your ethic into your music? Uh, it, it, it messed me up bad. It, it messed me up real bad. Because it was, I mean, of course, the unexpected deaths always hurt. Um, I mean, all deaths hurt. Yeah. But because he's my little brother, and the way he passed, that, that really messed me up. And um, well, with, with music, though, it helped. Like, for a while, I was I, I, I fell back from it. Mm-hmm. But then I jumped back in the harder. Like, it made me go so much harder because I had so much pain. Because, like, so, so when I did the first song for him, it's my brother, I realized when, after I did that song, it was, it was so therapeutic. Yeah. And, like, I, was, I let so much out, so I wasn't. I was still sad, but not like crazy sad like I was. So I'm like, okay, so that's why I did a whole, the whole album for him, uh-huh. and it really helped get every feeling I had off. So yeah. I would say that it, it helped me push it a lot, and it helped. I got a lot, of, a whole new fan base from that though. Cause, because you, we felt it. Yes. I was listening to it like, wow, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yes, I don't listen to that. That one, I don't listen to it no more. I can't. No, you uh-huh. as an artist, you shouldn't because uh-huh. you've uh-huh. evolved. But like as an audience member, like you were talking about with Biggie, like yes, right. That helps you understand. It do. And, it yeah. Do. Um, did you want to talk about the situation of his passing? Oh yeah, yeah, I, I will. So he he um he passed in 2018. Mm-hmm. Um, it's pretty much like so y'all see all the Black Lives Matter stuff going on. Mm-hmm. He was another situation. Didn't get the. The 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 um what I'm trying to say like it, it stuff wasn't recorded or nothing like that so you know we didn't get the publicity that everybody else oh. stuff do but um so he was arrested on March 22nd uh, 2018 mm-hmm. my sister had called me I'm up here in Virginia now my sister called me saying that he was um pretty good you think we're good I'm just looking at the battery I'm a, after this story I'm probably gonna see how much longer we got okay I got you yeah. all right we got two minutes. I got you. I'm in quick. So he pretty much he got arrested March 22nd. My sister called me same night saying he was on life support mm-hmm. and he got arrested this and that. I'm like, what? I said he's gonna be good. It's like I don't know. I don't know. Mm-hmm. So I'm up all night then thinking like, nah, he ain't about to die. Nah, nah, not 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 Chris. Mm-hmm. So the next day, my grandma called me and said he he brain dead. So I tell my trainer come here. I need to go home. They ain't wanna let me. They that not wanna let me. A lot. Yes. That's a sad thing. Yes. But my chief at the time, I'm sure you know him. But he um, wait, really? Yes. Oh, he, that makes me so happy because yes. they did him dirty. He told me. Okay. Told yeah. Me. Yes. He told me it's messed up. Yeah. But he he fought. He made sure I went home. Yeah. He made sure, and I I'm so I'm I always appreciate him for that. Yeah. But um, so I get home. He he bruised up, man. He black eyed this that. Long story short, so there's a lot of different theories and what happened. But yeah. um, from what we believe happened, he. Even the nurses that was there, he because he had a ruptured spleen, he had brain trauma, head trauma, he had a black eye, he had a missing tooth, all that stuff. But from what they saying is he like ate some dope or whatever, and he died that way. But Not with all that body damage. He, thank you. <laughs> that thank don't you. make no sense. Thank you. So yeah, it just, it, mm, that was hard because like lawyers and stuff down there, nobody would, they helped, but they didn't want to. They will leave the case like quick, mm-hmm. all of them. Cause you know they all work together. So mm-hmm. like, so yeah, it's still an ongoing battle though. Mm. Yeah, we'll hopefully get justice for him one day, though. Okay. Cool. I guess that finishes things up. Um, last thing would be, where can they find you online, your social media? Right. Um, and, uh, yeah, if you have any events coming up or anything, this is the time for you to announce it. Gotcha. 
So you're going to, mostly everything's on my website, which is southcat501.com. Mm-hmm. Um, IG, southcat843. Um, Facebook, southcat501. SoundCloud, southcat. I mean, I'm on every streaming platform. YouTube, I think it's southcat. But if you go to my um, website, it's all linked into there. Everything linked into there. Mm-hmm. Um, I ain't got no performances coming up soon or nothing like that, but I got a, a new project I'm about to put out really soon. Okay. Um, so, yeah, y'all stay on the lookout for that. Okay. And I did forget one question. Right. Are there any questions that you wish anyone would ask you on an interview that they mm-hmm. haven't yet or that you think nobody's ever thought of? I, I don't think so. I know y'all nailed everything on here. Like, everything. <laughs> <laughs> so like, nah, I think, I think we good. Okay. Cool beans. We're going to leave you guys with some peace, love, good vibes, and positivity. That's it. I be killing myself. Hey, yo, get you. Live show, bro. I be killing myself. All these drugs. You crazy for this one. All these girls, I've been killing myself. Still on that drink and I'm feeling myself. Most of the time, I've been lit by myself. That's with the aim, shooting like stuff. All these girls, I've been killing myself. Still on that drink and I'm feeling myself. Most of the time, I've been lit by myself. That's with the aim, shooting like stuff. All these drugs, I've been killing myself. All these drugs, I've been killing myself. Fucking me, I've been killing myself. I be killing myself. I got myself right. What you do to yourself? You move to the right and I move to the left. Ain't suicidal, but ain't scared of death. Get to the fullest. I'm taking these breaths, talking the bill, taking these steps, popping these pills. Anything help? They got me on this and they got me on that. It make me feel numb. It's been holding me back. Got too much to offer and so much to give. Got these blessings, making these kids. Just got a house, just got a crib. My girl said I got a rich and a live. My niggas been dying. My brother just left. I pray for myself because I can be next or you can be next, but nobody know. Open my chakras, cleansing my soul. Long live nays and long live fast. These kids growing up with no. No mama, no dad, don't live me, don't live Bailey. The niggas pussy, my city is crazy. They killing these women, they killing these babies. Who can you trust? Everybody seems shady. This shit getting old, but turning me cold. They do it for money, it ain't up your soul. All these girls, I've been killing myself. Still on that drink and I'm feeling myself. Most of the time, I be lit by myself. That's what they aim, shooting like stuff. All these girls, I've been killing myself. Still on that drink and I'm feeling myself. Most of the time, I be lit by myself. That's what they aim, shooting like stuff. All these drugs, I be killing myself. I be killing myself. Fucking these hoes. I be killing myself. I be killing myself. Papa, he raised me not to be a punk. Speakers be knocking with guns in the trunk. That's why I got hands, why I got bands. Made me a man of a part of the plan. Daddy wasn't around, and neither was mama. My daddy here like he was kin to Osama. That's why I drink wine, chase it with beer. Why I drink dark, and I miss it with clear. Mama, she loved it the best way she could. Didn't know now, but now it's understood. Wasn't all bad, but it wasn't all good. Lived in the country, but raised in the hood. BSP shit, GCP shit. Niggas be tripping, PCP shit. Know what to spend when you come to my time. What you need, I can get it right now. If I take a break, I might take a walk. Don't know what I'm here. I'm locked in your thoughts Niggas be trying me with the sobriety That my society for this anxiety Watching the Simpsons All the predictions Reading the Bible Think it's fulfilling Their medication I put in my system And take me away It's a beautiful feeling All these drugs I've been killing myself Still on that drink And I'm feeling myself Most of the time I be lit by myself That's what they aim Shooting like stuff All these drugs I be killing myself Still on that drink And I'm feeling myself Most of the time I be lit by myself That's what they aim Shooting like stuff All these drugs I be killing myself all this drink, I be killing myself. Fucking these hoes, I be killing myself. Popping these pills, I be killing myself.